it's sort of like you have Miles Davis and Bjork having an illegitimate love child. <laughs> You know, I've been a longtime fan of Bjork, and I had previously recorded a uh, Bjork song called Pagan Poetry on my 2007 Resonance release. And I didn't really feel like we captured the essence of the subconscious nature of the music, and I wanted to explore that in detail. And I was listening to the Volta recording for a long time, and just really the recording resonated with me. and. I started thinking, okay, how do, who, who should I involve with this? Who could pos possibly help me realize this music? And of course, the first person that came to mind was Mark Egan, my bro, and my favorite bass player to perform with. And uh, I knew he would really dig in and, and develop the creative aspect of, that I was looking for. He wanted to go in and do a project, and he called me and asked me if I wanted to be involved. And of course, I was totally wanted to be involved with it. And uh, that was sort of the genesis of uh, how the Constellation Project started. We played with this great trumpet player, Ryan Carno, who is an expat that lives in Cologne. And I saw, thought, you know, Ryan would really bring in a European element to the music that, that wouldn't be present if we used all American musicians. Well, I met uh, Carl Latham and Mark Egan at a recording session uh, on my birthday in Augsburg, Germany, uh, about two years ago. Uh, and I think the first take we took was a tune called Slinky by Mark Egan. And I remember after the first take, coming out of the, the booth where I was recording in, and hugging Mark and Carl, <laughs> feeling immediately uh, like musical brothers. And I realized, you know, I play a lot with, with a great keyboardist, Nick Rolfe, in a band called Big Funk. And in some of the really creative, uh, what people would call out moments of that music, I really saw glimpses of what I thought Nick might bring to the project. And to be honest, I was really surprised with what he did in the studio, and it, it greatly surpassed my expectations. So it's rare that you can play with musicians and just really not say anything and come up with the type of music that we came up with on this CD. So it's very special, very intimate improvising, and very intense in a great way. The studio, and especially the engineer, Jeremy, uh, was crucial in, in this recording. And it's great to have an engineer that really is an engineer and doesn't, doesn't interject himself in the middle of the recording process. They really, he, he much more created a fertile environment and is an enabler. He just enables you to realize the things that you're thinking about and trying to create. Well, uh, I've known Carl for a number of years just through other, other connections that we have and other friends. And we'd gotten together and he was talking about doing some projects and I was looking for to branch out a little bit for the work that I was doing. And uh, he said he was interested in bringing a, a project to the studio and, and having it be a certain interpretation of, of Bjork's music. And I was like, wow, that's pretty wild. Uh, so I immediately got excited about that and offered up any way that I could help. So uh, Carl, you know, was very gracious and said, well, why don't you engineer it and we'll see what we can get out of it. Yeah, interpreting Bjork's music was a special challenge for me. Uh, 
I've always, like I said, always been a huge fan of her music and the way she phrases her melodies. And her, it's always spoken to me as a trumpet player. Um, she has these really long, poetic, uh, expanded, extended sort of melodic ideas. Uh, and that's something that I've always sort of taken, listened to, and tried to emulate a bit in my own playing. And this was a big challenge to sort of recreate that. Uh, and also sort of to try to get the uh, feeling of the words that she uses because there's some really deep meaning behind the words, which naturally as a trumpet player you can't, you know, recreate one-to-one. -one. So I was trying to, on one hand, get the feeling from the, the poetry involved, and on the other hand, uh, try to not copy one-to-one -one her phrasing, but use her phrasing as a, as a model for the way I would interpret her melodies. And uh, that ended up being extremely easy, much easier than I imagined to do, mostly because of the incredible rhythm section uh, playing underneath me while I was playing the melodies. They just laid down such a beautiful uh, carpet sort of for me to set the melody on top of and just, you know, fly with it. We're looking forward to bringing this band on the road and playing the music for the people. Yeah. It's going to be different every night. It's going to be intense yeah. and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think um, a lot of the listeners out there are going to really enjoy it. Yeah, we go for it. Yeah, it's really powerful music on the CD. And 